So the next thing to mention regarding the nature of sexual sin is sexual sin under the new covenant. Firstly, the Old Testament laws are confirmed and strengthened. Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 through 28 says, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew chapter 5 verse 31 through 32 says, It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9 says, But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15 through 16 says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. The second thing to mention regarding sexual sin under the new covenant is the need for holiness in the lives of believers. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 says, But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be even named among you as is proper among saints. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 16 says that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau who sold his birthright for a single meal. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15 through 16 says, But as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1 through 3 says, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for human passions but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44 says, For I am the Lord Lord your God, consecrate yourselves therefore, and be holy for I am holy. You shall not defile yourselves with any swarming thing and that crawls on the ground. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 through 7 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things. As we told you beforehand in Solomon warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. The third thing regarding sexual sin under the new covenant is the church must be kept pure. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 says, But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 through 7 says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters since then you would need to go out of the world but now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater reviler drunkard or swindler not even to eat with such a one first Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 through 5 says it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans for a man has his father's wife and and you are arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. For though absent in body, I am present in spirit. And if present, I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such a thing. When you are assembled in the name of the Lord Jesus and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. 